Okay, so I think we're ready. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so I guess we're ready to begin the meeting. First thing will be the pledge. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, and without indivisible liberty and justice for all. Motion to go into executive. What's the next? Motion. Second. 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 Oh, oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Let me get on the ball here. <laughs> yes, do the roll call, please. Mr. Bartholm. Yes. Here. Mrs. Boyd. Here. Mrs. Zero. Here. Mr. Gladding. Mrs. John Warren. Here. Mr. Hammermet. Here. Mrs. LaRosse. Mr. Mullaney. Here. Mr. Marin. Here. Mr. McCabe. Here. Mr. Harrell. Here. Mrs. Saunders. Here. Mr. Spilling. Mr. St. Pierre. Here. Mr. Thurber. Here. All board members present. <laughs> Now we can do a second. We've already got a first and a second. Are those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those? President St. Pierre, if I could give you, uh, for our executive session, um, there's a number of topics. Uh, number one, three, it's a matter related to an uh, investigation. Uh, number four, uh, proposed pending or current litigation. Number five, a uh, matter of collective negotiation involving the civil service law, the Taylor law, as well as some of the employment history and employment hiring of several individuals, as well as confidential personnel matters, and a matter related to a specific student of the district. Of the district. Okay. So, so we're first we're going to have to be we're going to do his evaluation. Okay. Okay. Yes. For all of our attendees, we are transitioning from executive session. Yes.
Dr. Roll again. Yes. Department of Productions. Can you get the same here? Eric Bell, CBS. Eric Bell, Grace Grace, CBS. Jamie Temple. Oh, welcome, by the way. Thank you. Michelle Friedman, CBS. Slattery, CBS. Alex St. Peter, CBS. All right. Thank you for that. So, begin with our opinions and concerns from the audience. Anybody have anything you throw in here tonight? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I just wanted to update you on CV Tech's graduation ceremonies for all of our campuses. Hopefully, you've received the information. Um, there will be a, a website launch for you to be able to either watch the live stream or attend in person. Last first campus graduations will be Monday the 21st at 4 and 7 and Tuesday the 22nd at 4 and 7 at the West Side Ballroom and it's uh, broken down by programs. Students have to pre-register and are allowed two guests that also have to be pre-registered with all of the contract, contact tracing information in advance. So, um, if you care to join us for one or all of those classroom sessions, please just um, let Dr. Davies' office know we'll get you on the guest list. But we would need to know in advance if, if, you, if you can let us know that. Our mind bill ceremonies will be on Thursday, the 24th at 4 o'clock and 7 o'clock at the Mariah Auditorium. Same rules apply if you plan to attend one or both. If you could please let us know so we can put you in pre registry on those lists. Um, I know some of you have reached out to see which ceremonies maybe more of the students from your district may be at. So just let me know if, if, if you can only attend one and you want to attend one that has the maximum amount of students. So um, we appreciate your patience with us. Each ceremony will be 45 minutes or less. Or, at one hour or less targeting 45 minutes. So we have a real modified um, show, um, but certainly all uh, highlighting the uh, graduates and their success. We just want to make sure that if you have any questions, um, let's go through the job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? That? Okay. So before we start out this evening, we um, have a special uh, Certificate of Appreciation for someone we know, Mr. Larry Barkham, <laughs> uh, in recognition of your 29 years of dedicated service to the Champlain Valley Educational Service as a board member, 23 years as our MOSI's board president. Over the years, you have given your all and dedicated yourself to the betterment of our students and component school districts. Through your efforts, through your commitment, and through your hard work, you have made us proud. Old Chair once said, I know of no great person except those who have rendered great services to the human race. This is truly indicative of you and your service to the CDES community. And um, just on a personal note, what I've learned about Larry over the years, because I, I met him about uh, 26 years ago when I first came <laughs> and I uh, probably mentioned this before, he welcomed me to the board because uh, I was new and never been. This is my first year on the board even in California, also. So it's a whole new ball game for me. Kind of scary walking into the board. And, uh, you don't know what's going to happen. Right? So he was very good at helping me feel comfortable. And you all know, Larry, both of you know, he, uh, he farmed all his life, that small farm. And so he got to work with cows. And one of the things you learn in working with cows is you learn patience. And I think that's why he's done so well here. Because he had cows. <laughs> I understand this because I've worked with cows. I still do. <laughs> you need patience and understanding. You know, you, you have to wait for the right moment before you say, come on, Bossy, let's go here. <laughs> but anyways, um, so uh, as board, we can begin to thank you enough service okay and we hope that uh, when you leave us you uh, enjoy the rest of your life doing the things you like to do i know you you, you bought a boat was it a couple of years ago something like that you just go enjoy it yeah uh we wish you many nice boating it's the best days of my life yeah 
They have bought the farm. They have sold the farm. <laughs> and that and that reminds me when when he sold the farm, his his uh, financer told him he says, you know, Larry, he says, farming is a difficult business. So out of every one hundred farms that sell, one farmer comes out of it ahead, has money left over. It was Larry. <laughs> And this was a guy that knew what he was talking about. They, they know lots of farmers. They know how hard it is. So, so you did something right, Larry. And and we're, we're very happy that you've been part of this board. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah. Let Larry stand up. Okay, yeah, there you go. We'll, uh, we'll uh, have this out here for there. <laughs> there. Yeah, one, two, three. There you go. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sure. Yep. Yep. Yes. And and in addition, and we do have additional certificates of appreciation that will be acknowledged for all of our other employees, um, and that will be part of our end of the year activities. But with that being said, one of the individuals who has that certificate that will be given it as well during the entire uh, all, all retirees group for CBS is our long uh, standing, highly respected uh, assistant superintendent of 21st century learning. Instruction is Terry Calvary Spray. Um, she's concluding 16 years uh, with CPES um, as our assistant superintendent. And Terry, you told me once upon a time that um, Bosies and Craig took a chance on you. Uh, you took a chance, and boy, what a great payoff that, that chance has had. Um, highly respected, a leader in the state, has led math initiatives. And during your career, not only were you a successful math teacher, cheerleading coach, so she was also a uh, very athletic with it. Math teacher. Yeah. Math, math, math teacher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, and even president of the union back in the day, and then she went to state ed, and it was highly respected there. And I know, Terry, we've talked about, uh, you were me with some of your stories, working with Jim Cadamus and going all over the state. Uh, I'm saying you can say, okay, Terry, come on, we're going to New York City. Here. <laughs> <laughs> but again, very highly respected. She's been a leader at SCBN, that's a statewide assistant superintendent's network for curriculum development, um, as well as a leader in the North Country and highly respected by our superintendents, by the teachers, by our staff throughout the region. Um, so Terry is, is held in high esteem and she has a way with, with, with students and children that's such so positive. Um, so it really is with, with you know, a sad heart that we see her go, but we also and share her, her joy in her new 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 chapter in her life with her retirement. And and Sherry, we all wish you the best and we want to say congratulations with us all thanks. So could you please join me in, in giving her a round of applause? Thank you. Like I say, I won't miss the work. I'll miss the people. Uh, definitely, but I'm not very far. Group nine, just come down. We want to you know, go on the lake. You know, maybe go on the lake. Maybe come down with a boat, air quilt, and then go for the boat. Right? <laughs> we got my jet ski. I brought my father from 78 on a jet ski for the first time last summer. So we're going to go down there. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so but that's what I plan to do. A lot of so this summer, I'm just going to take the summer off and enjoy and make some decisions about how busy do I want to make myself this fall. Not too busy. So, um, <laughs> but at the same time, I know I'm going to want to do something. So I have some plans, but I don't have anything final yet. So I will be both no decisions to the end of August. But I do appreciate the board's support over the years. And really, I think this is what makes both people special. I mean, there are defined things we have to do. But there's a lot of lateral like freedom to do other things. And that's what makes I think both seem so great and attractive for a lot of people. And it's sometimes it's like a secret that people don't know because it's not like a building principle that's pretty scripted, right? Your day is pretty well mapped out. 
but at postseason, the fact that we get to always work on projects and we always get unique phone calls and requests, and we're like, we've never done this before. Like, um, but that's what keeps it fresh and exciting. So, um, I mean, I think that's what is so great about postseason. So, I just want to thank all of you. I want to thank our cabinet team and cabinet members. Um, it's just been great. I'm like, but I think that I'm ready. I'm like, in 14 years as a teacher, four years as beta, and now 16 years, I'm ready. <laughs> yes, you are ready. <laughs> thank you. Thank well, you. Thank you. Everybody's support. Mark's been great. Yep. You know, just everybody and all of our you know, dedicated staff. Like, I just, you know, people who work 40 years with the organization, 30 years with the organization, I mean, they're dedicated. A lot of dedicated people. Yep. So it's a special place. Good. Good to hear it that way. Fantastic. All right. So, um, Moving on to the strategic plan and the year update, I believe is next. Yes, so uh, President St. Pierre, we will be giving our strategic plan PowerPoint presentation. Yep. Alex, are you moving in for us? Okay. So let me just, just stand as we're looking at this, and I, we're going to, going to call and ask all of our Assistant, uh, our assistant superintendents, as well as our directors, to all share in the presentation tonight. Alex, are you going to give me that? Thank you. We'll pass the baton. I'm going to make the do the baton here, and then move over from there. Well, I might come over here. As you can see, my arm is getting getting better as we speak. So, with that said, okay. <laughs> um, so if Stand back here. Um, again, our theme for the start of the year was reimagine, reunite, and renew. So this year we know that we tackled a challenging year. Um, it was there were lots of uh, lots of unexpected opportunities, but also many opportunities, many challenges that we didn't expect as well. With that said, we want to express our sincere thanks and gratitude um, for our to our district uh, planning team. Um, as well as all of our divisional teams, you see a shot and we had the opportunity this year to present to work with our district planning team virtually. And only virtually so Sean Brady joined us and actually laid out. He called it a straw poll approach where he worked he, where people did additional work ahead of time. He worked with the leaders of the team Then we brought forward the recommendations and it really was a successful process again, totally virtual. But we want to thank our, our board members, Mrs. Saunders and Mr. Harriman, who have been active on the district planning team for many years. Um, have done a great job and, and continue to be uh, strong contributors. We had two superintendents as well, Mr. Meyer and Mr. Osborne from Boquet Valley, as well as Shay Z, as well as all of our administrators, our leaders, and our, our staff, who all have been part of it as well. Again, a very it's a it's a very important process where we have input as we move forward. Um, with that said, we'll be very brief uh, with our mission, vision, and core beliefs again, using that as the framework to continue to guide our work as well as our progress and our growth. Um, with that said, uh, you notice that we have the term it was an extraordinary year. You've heard the term many times unprecedented. Um, and with that said, I think extraordinary is, is actually a much better uh, adjective. Really, why? Because it provided us opportunities we never expected as well as many challenges that we didn't anticipate. And yet we continue to move forward and staff pulled together. Staff worked hard. We, we collaborated in new and uh, you know, higher levels than we've ever done before. And we, contribute, we continue to look at the guidance that sometimes was evolving daily. I mean, just think of the number of emails you got from me on a daily or weekly basis on changes in guidance and what was gonna be happening the next day or not as well as shutting down school for a week or two and then and going only remote and so on and so forth. So we went through the entire year, um, really continuing to evolve with, with the guidance changes as well as implement at higher levels. Again, our students, our staff, our parents, everyone rose to the challenge. And with that said, we could not have done it without our nurses. We couldn't have done it without our own staff. We couldn't have done it without our, our administrators and our leaders. Again, we had the philosophy that all of our staff were essential and are essential. And with that being said, we were able to move forward and move forward successfully. The collaboration, the leadership that occurred within our North Country schools as well was, was at the highest level 
that I believe I've ever experienced as well. And it continues, and we believe will continue to pay, di pay dividends. We have the multi-agency coordinated leadership with our health departments. We're still having check-in meetings. We, I, I worked with, and we worked with our county health departments, our county leadership, our, our go local governments, as well as local businesses, and really pulled together with the hospital and all the, the social agencies, social service agencies. Again, why? Because we were all supporting our community. The ongoing communication that we, we shared, the virtual experience and the, the evolution of our virtual you know, opportunities that we had, including WebExes. Think of our, our board meetings that we had that were only virtual, or even to this day, having a, a hybrid meeting that allows our board members to, to sign in from home or from with their own location has been amazing and has really uh, given us a different perspective about how we can engage and how we can participate as well as the support. And lastly, just the adaptable instruction and responsiveness. Uh, we had our, our hybrid model in CB Tech, where students were full time, full day for several days, had a remote day, and then the other cohort came in. Um, it, it really transforms how we, we present our CTE programs, and you'll hear an update further from Mrs. Friedman about that today, just the highlights, um, as well as our in-person instruction in special education. It was truly an extraordinary year by, uh, by our extraordinary staff. Um, we want to just acknowledge as well that not only while that all was happening, we continue to move forward forward successfully with our capital project. Uh, it was an amazing year for, for even our capital project. Why? In spite of a pandemic, when many of our, our community and businesses were shut down or on limited service, we continued to, to have a construction project that moved forward and progressed at a good, at a good clip. We had a fantastic construction team. Our staff, our OM staff kicked in, jumped in with both feet. Mr. Bell, your leadership has been fantastic as well. And you also worked closely with our administrators and our staff to overcome the challenges that came forward where there was input and discussion. And yet, virtually, we, we just made it work and then we moved forward. So it really was a, a truly extraordinary year on the construction project as well. Our Plattsburgh main campus improvements, you can see a few of the, the pics there. You'll see a few other shots later as well. You look at our new roof, you look at the new special education entrance, our new CB Tech entrance and our bathrooms and classrooms and so on and so forth. Just amazing work, as well as the work that's happening now at our satellite campus. Um, Excuse me, have... Dr. Davey? Yes. Excuse me. Um, what we're seeing on the screen here is multiple screens and slide six of 46, um, which makes it kind of hard to see the, the main slide. Is that what you're intending, or do you need to switch to a slideshow presentation? So, Mr. St. Pierre was helping us here. For... Right now, we're seeing the um, on the side, we're seeing the multiple slides and in the middle of the screen, which is easier, but not. Okay, Ms. Steinhorn, thank you for that update. Mr. St. Pierre, are you? He's working on it right now as we speak. Thank you. It's just like to hear, be able to see what, what you're talking about. So thank you. Now you got it. Well, add it. <laughs> we're there for it. a second. <laughs> it shows two now. It shows in the center. It's in the presenter. Oh, it's in presenter mode. Oh, thank you. I think it's okay. Give us one minute while we adjust. You got it. Perfect, Miss Guy Horn. Thank you for for bringing that to our attention. And thank as you. we. Yes, thank you. So, as you see, a couple of finalized pictures there of our new roof, as well as our our roof units. Just what a difference between the before and after, as you as you know and have seen, as well as our special education entrance and and that whole resource, as well as our classrooms and our offices. It's been a, it's it really has helped set a new standard for our our own organization as well, um, and something that we continue to be proud of as we move forward. 
in the Mineville campus. There's been there's been work on the playground and site work, and now they're gearing up for the summer work as well as windows and and the safety vestibule as well as a whole lot of other information. Mr. Bell will share. And lastly, we continue to move forward with our capital project, not only successfully, but on time and under under budget with really tremendous teamwork where everyone who was being essential helped contribute to our success. So very pleased to share that overview of our of our strategic plan highlights. And now I'm going to pass it as I'm clicking and not moving forward. Here is that. Do I move? Okay. There we go. Okay. There we go. And and lastly, just a couple of highlights about our our strategic plan survey. You know that we've contributed, continued to utilize our survey as an instrument to support our strategic plan and gather feedback from us. We had 225 participants this year. It wasn't our highest, but we did have. It was our third highest. It's something that we'll continue to move forward with and, and attempt to really try to implement at higher levels, as well as work around our scheduling a little bit more with vacations. Um, there were areas that, that we continue to show progress. There were also growth areas that were more identified this year that has helped us identify what we want to work on going forward. The support staff, the, the amount of staff support that, that uh, we've talked about, about supporting each other and really supporting each other throughout this pandemic, did come in as the highest level ever, which I think is truly amazing. And that's been consistently high for eight years. So when you think about, you know, our staff pulling together and working together, that was a, was really an amazing number, as well as despite the COVID restrictions, you know, people feel that they have the create the, the ability to be creative in their job duties as they move forward. So really positive. Thank you for your support and, and that assessment and also utilizing that those resources to help us continue and move forward. I'm now going to share it with our colleague, Mrs. Friedman. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good, good evening. I'm very pleased to present on um, the strategic planning process uh, with the CV Tech Division. All four campuses and offsite locations, like everyone, staff, it was just remarkable. Um, everybody just rose to the challenge. Um, so the next two slides are just going to highlight what we targeted on our four operate, oh, excuse me, five operational committees for the strategic plan. Um, there's a whole bunch of other stuff that happened um, from Dr. Davey mentioning before to a new schedule that we've never had, full days, um, which led to uh, meal planning and, and, the, and making breakfast and lunch for all of our kids. And it's funny because uh, Principal McCartney said today, I never knew busboy was going to become duties as a sign. <laughs> that's funny. Um, I'm like, wow, that's straight. You can put that on your resume now. Um, so these two slides are just a little taste of what is in the appendix, which is the full report of our strategic planning efforts for this year while we were going through the pandemic. So it's really incredible to, to just look at how everybody just stepped up. Um, Terry mentioned it before, people really love to work here. And if this past year was not indicative of that mindset, I don't know how else to demonstrate. Um, so I know you've had this in advance, so some of the highlights where our, we still move forward with our curriculum um, uh, redefinition and making sure that we're following state um, guidance. We don't have state CTE curriculum, but we're working through coordinating and, um, and synchronizing programs across the state. Um, we were able to actually implement our performance assessments, which is part of the, um, the regulations for state approved CTE programs and also the the opportunity for the acquisition of the advanced regions designation for the CTE endorsement. And um, we actually shifted um, and moved away from actual uh, portfolios, hard copy portfolios and use Microsoft Sway so that all students exit portfolios will be uh, through Microsoft Sway, which is really kind of cool. The um, 
the pictures that you see, I know you've seen these pictures probably before, but just to highlight some of the innovative ways that we navigated this year and hit our targets. Um, you see Mr. Aubin being nationally recognized um, with a $50,000 award for um, his excellence in, te in teaching from Harbor Freight. The middle photo is an, a photo of our brand new New Visions Applied Engineering Program, which we launched during the pandemic, which is like mind blowing to me. Um, so very excited that uh, we were able to move forward with that early college high school experience and to, to uh, propel that into subsequent years. And in the bottom left hand corner, although we expected to sell that last summer, we were all busy being closed and working from our dining rooms. So this has been finished, this tiny house, hopefully working with Eric and his team, Hopefully you'll see some news about when it's going up for auction or targeting uh, July 1st, obviously new fiscal year with a bid opening process around the mid uh, early to mid um, August. So, and then hopefully the sale from that will start the new project next year. Does it come with a trailer? I, uh, yes. <laughs> we, we special order that it came from Texas. Texas? Yeah. yeah. And so, um, it, it's been so long. It seems like we started it 30 years ago. Um, the, visualize going it has, to it just, it does, it, it, it's custom made for this particular build, which is kind of cool. And we actually, uh, were able to, uh, lean from. FEH's experience uh, when they pointed us in their direction. Oh, yeah, so this next slide again highlighting some of the targets that we hit and are ongoing in our strategic plan. Uh, part of the CV Tech division, as, as far as the high schools go, is um, we have to recruit, um, we have to do marketing, we have to have the best programs, but we also have to have students populating them. We were unable to do any of our, our in-person recruitment and our components this year. So we really uh, jumped off the deep end and went all virtual. That top photo of the Mineville campus is actually a photo, a screenshot of our 3D virtual tour. You can see those little squares above. Those are all of the, the additional CV Tech campuses and different hallways that you can actually go into classrooms and click on videos and look at equipment and hear video, uh, hear um, remarks from students and teachers. So we were, we've been wanting to do it for years. So we're grateful for the pandemic that they <laughs> kind of pushed us in that direction. Um, we also had to get very creative with our work based learning. We had a lot of um, business and industry partners remoting in presenting to our school teams in other areas. Um, we are also uh, continuing to really um, move forward in our presence in adult literacy and job skills training in the uh, Essex and, and Clinton County communities, um, expanding to more um, offsite locations where we feel that it's um, it removes the transportation barrier for some of our adult learners to uh, obtain their high school equivalency and also some, some employability skills. So we're very proud of the work. If you look at the, um, the appendix with the entire plan, you'll see in each target that was set in all five of our committees, whether the, that target was met, whether it's still in progress, delayed or ongoing. And if you do have any questions about any of those, please feel free to let me know. But it has actually, it's been a breathless year. Um, and but it's been it's been very productive. I have a question for you. Oh yeah. Comment. So sweet. Sure. I heard somewhere in the past several months that maybe it was a student about how going a full day instead of all these half days, they felt much more productive. Is there something in the down the road where you can really look at how students are taught with the idea that they need longer periods? So maybe they could, they come less days, but they get more done. Some of our, some schools do uh, one week out and one week off. Non pandemic times, um, usually not in New York. Other other states that like Ohio, Florida, big CTE states. Um, sometimes they have the four year comprehensive high school. Um, mm -hmm. I have to tell you, it was a heavy lift um, to to go full days for a multitude of reasons, but it impacts 
the component district master schedules. And oh, yeah. if all of our components are on the same master schedule, I'm sure we would be able to look look at that um, a little bit more in depth. We are going back to five half day sessions sure. next year, but we're cohorting juniors in one session, seniors in another to try to help with that continuity of, of curriculum. Because when you have a first year and second year and an adult learner in one session, um, it does take away from that continuity. Our teachers do an amazing job. What we learned a longer period is always one more one tall, right? But having only first year students in that session maximized our instructional capabilities. So we're moving in that direction. And I'm sure our our, um, our components would love to talk more about scheduling with us, right, Terry? <laughs> but uh, we we would love to have them all day, every day, yeah. um, maybe someday. Yeah, I mean, it's that business about they leave the pace of where we get here, yeah. and then they have to leave. Yeah, they don't get much instruction. Yeah, and some of our students are commuting 40 minutes one way, so. Uh, we're getting there, though. We're going. Yeah. The needle is going in the right direction. Oh, good. I just thought it'd be a good discussion. Thank you. Are we talking about central administration uh, as part of our strategic plan? We lump in central administration and O and M together uh, as we go through the process. So I'll give you some highlights. Like Dr. David mentioned, quite a bit of items on our capital project. Uh, one of the big things to add is that uh, we decided to make a move to two summers of construction in one. So during this pandemic, our main campus got completely overhauled. All the work that was to be done at the main campus all got done in one summer. That was planned to be done over two summers. Uh, we had an opportunity uh, last summer, so the summer of this school, this current school year, we didn't have a special ed in-house summer school, so we took advantage of that in order to not impact it this year. So Director Slattery has a building that he can use and and not be disrupted due to the capital project. So again, we saw the pandemic as an opportunity, originally being a hurdle, but then becoming an opportunity, and we took advantage of that opportunity. Uh, so really great impact on our. Uh, Educational environment this year, uh, getting all that work done at the main campus when the students came back, when the staff came back in September, coming off from the pandemic and the first time stepping foot in the building in the six month, months, we wanted them to feel that they were in that brand new environment, one that they can really thrive in. Uh, and we felt that heat coming from them. And then we had it from our students when they returned a few days later. So it, it was very advantageous to us to take advantage of that, of that time to do all of the work at once. Um, and we were successful in that, and we were able to open our school on time. Uh, we didn't have any issues with delaying the opening of our building while undertaking such a massive uh, amount of work in the summer. So, kind of project uh, is going well uh, through the pandemic. We have not had stoppages. Uh, we have not had an issue with shortages of materials. Uh, one of the strategies that we took early on in this process, knowing we were living in a pandemic, uh, our contract documents say, if you order the materials and you store them, we will pay you for those materials. So as we were starting construction under a pandemic, we said, what are your materials? Put them in storage and we will give you your money now uh, because that's part of our contract documents. The windows and doors in Mineville, they've been sitting down there for about a year in storage ready to be installed because we didn't want any delays in the work because of shortages in materials, which is what we've been seeing in the last two months. Significant shortages in materials, but our storage conic boxes, we have plenty of them around. Also, local vendors have been storing materials for our contractors, such as Heinz Electric and other ones, uh, so we could have them all on site. Did that kind of help lock in the price too? Because I'm sure some things have gone. Yes, it, it did, and um, we have contracts with them. You know, our bid price is our bid price. However, there's certain clauses that they could ask for more funds. We've been able to avoid that. That has certainly helped in them to order help. Yeah. O&M team. Uh, they really rose to the challenge this year. Uh, when you look at an operations and maintenance team, when you have a capital project, their workload is expanded significantly. They, their environment is so totally disrupted. Their typical summer work that they normally do to get classrooms ready, totally you know, crumbled up and thrown out. And now you're, you're game planning on the board and things are changing every day why contractors are in your building. And when we're having 40 or 50 contractors in our building, during a pandemic, uh, it was complete chaos at times, but it was organized by our, our administrative team and our O&M team. Uh, so kudos to our O&M team rising to the challenge of the capital project and then throwing on top of that 
a reopening plan for September that called for all new cleaning and disinfecting procedures to be done all through the, the school day as well as after the school day. And we did it without increasing staff. They did it um, all with the staffing that we had, all with the extra workload. Our whole team rose to the challenge and stepped up. And lastly, I'll say the capital project gives you an opportunity to work alongside a capital project uh, why walls are open or why while your floors are ripped up, you may want to get some maintenance done. We have a very strong maintenance staff. We've been had great hires uh, to get talented individuals from the construction industry. They did a significant amount of work alongside our capital project. You can see some of our, our individuals painting uh, the garage doors in the back of CB Tech. Those little things that our own M team did, uh, our CB Tech lobby was only called for a new wall in it. We replaced the light ceiling grid, the floor, did all that, and it looked like a brand new space, and that was done by our own M team alongside those contractors. So our team, with their strengths, made a significant impact on our building. And then I'll also comment on uh, our CB Tech students. You can see there uh, at CBS at the BOCES, we're fortunate to have uh, students in the trades with skills. Uh, our site contractor said, hey, we have to drop trees. This is our whole fat issue. You can't drop trees until uh, after a certain date. Unless you're the owner or the owner, our kids needed an site experience, they dropped the trees for us. Uh, so Mr. Pierce and Ms. Parker class uh, did a phenomenal job for us. We also had the same help in Mineville uh, from Mr. Rodriguez's class when we had to try to drop trees down there for a new uh, fiber line coming into our building. Uh, overcoming many challenges of the pandemic, looking at our central administrative team across the board. Uh, we didn't miss a, a bi-monthly payroll. Uh, all of our accounts payable were done on time. We made all of our payments. Uh, we were able to successfully transition back to an in-person learning environment. And prior to that, probably one of our harder steps was transitioning back our 12-month employees first, right? Because we had a lot of work to do. Well, we have a bunch of people working from home in June. How are we going to get everybody back with almost no guidance at that time? So we created our own, worked together as a team and a unit. Uh, we came up with some return to work guidance for our 12-month employees first. Then we started to uh, we got the state guidance on our 10 month staff work through it. Uh, and then lastly, I'll say, Dr. David mentioned the regulations changing on a regular basis. Uh, we have a lot of staff that, you know, were going out on COVID leaves, their family members were on quarantine or they were isolated. So we were managing through the guidelines of the FFCRA as well as the New York State COVID leave. Uh, our team put in place before school even started an application process, a way for our staff to apply and be granted days and our goal all along was to comfort them because when you think about staff coming back the last thing they're worried about is the quarantine when they're coming back to teach kids that they haven't seen in months in the environment that's brand new to them with masks on they don't know what they're doing so our team did not want them to have to worry about ffcra new york state covid leaves all these foreign leaves to them so we made a very simplistic process for them to you know you're out you're quarantined do it we'll apply for it we'll figure out after and we worked hand in hand with our employees. Those are two types of leave, but all across when regulations were changing, we always collaborated with our uh, labor unions as well as our staff to make sure that they felt supported and they had someone they could turn to at a time that was very foreign to them, but sometimes very challenging, especially if you were sick and isolated with COVID or a family member was. So uh, it, overcoming the many challenges of the pandemic is a, is a great highlight of our central administrative team this year. I have the great honor of passing the baton to Ms. Valerie's Gray. <laughs> no, ma'am. That's the last time I get to do this. I know. <laughs> I'll be a little quicker, I think. <laughs> um, so, Instruction Services Center, we used that picture because that was our 33,000 masks that we got for districts. So, we did that. We did a lot of signage for our districts and social distancing, little spots to put on floors and um, one way traffic and all the different things that we did. So, definitely very busy this year as everyone else was. Um, some highlights thanks to Alex St. Pierre. Um, we were able to expand the instructional technology closer faster than what we probably planned to do, but actually it worked out well and we actually have more interest for next year. So we're proud of that. Um, another thing is our community schools got off the ground through Eric's work um, is getting that approved by SED. And we've had some thoughts and ideas of some services to run through that. We haven't run any particular service yet, 
but right now we have an RFQ out for um, school medical director services for component districts. So we're going to see where that lands, uh, but I see that growing in the future. Um, Deployed devices, again, the IT staff did an outstanding job of making sure last spring, but then also this year, uh, being prepared for us to go remote at any time. So making sure our students and our staff had devices in hand so that they would not lose any operations because of being, having to go remote. So that was great. And again, just the use of our online platforms, keeping us um, in sync with all of the um, applications that we are using and making sure everyone was adept at those. So a lot of technical assistance, I would say, over the last uh, probably 16 months. Um, again, with all the changes, definitely timely updates was critical, both for us, but also for our component districts. So our communications department did a great job, uh, as well as the print shop, with making sure that any communications that were being developed through the district was getting updated, whether it was their website, whether it was social media sites, or also if it was even like printed documents or um, website updates. So we did a lot of that this year. Um, also the virtual professional development, definitely professional development looked very differently this year, uh, just because everything was remote and was virtual. But I will tell you, we are now great working on any platform, whether it's WebEx, it's Teams, and it's Zoom, right? Like we're great at that now. Um, so, so I do think with the pandemic, as many people said, you know, it was a horrible thing, right? Like people lost lives of it, but it actually forced us to think differently a lot quicker than we probably would have in a normal time, right? Like so, out of it came, I think, a lot of positives. And it allows people to attend things when maybe in the past they said, well, I can't go because I have this or I have that. Now you're going to have at least opportunities to join in and you're not having all the travel time and loss of a lot of valuable um, space. Now, I'm not saying it's always that way, but a lot of people are looking at now, wait, well, you know, your monthly meetings. One month we might be in person, the next month we'll be hybrid, the next month we'll be in person. A lot of people are thinking differently about how they're going to do business. So I think that's good. I heard some people saying like, you know, I'm actually more effective working from home. I'm like, well, in school, we don't have that option, do we? Like, no. we have we have a captive audience coming to our school. So that is a little different. But like I said, I just think that having, you know, administrators and buildings, I know, like, even Matt and Michelle being in their division sometimes, it's like instead of coming to another location, it's just nice to be in case of when something happens, right? You can always, like, be right down the hall rather than, oh, I'm in Mineville or I'm in you know, college over here and I've got to get back there. And so I do think there's pros and cons to that. So, um, so, so it's sorry. exciting. Yeah. How hard was it to get sourced as far as devices? How hard was it? Absolutely yeah. not bad. Really? Yeah. We, yeah. we scrambled and we had most of them already. Oh. Right, because we were expecting, so the divisions definitely, we were buying as they were like almost going off the shelves, but a little bit faster than okay. what, then but after that, like people couldn't get any devices, right? Like they were gone. Chromebooks were gone. We used actual full laptops for our students. We didn't really go the Chromebook route um, just because some of the programs and whatever, they need more capacity and capability. Um, but I would say even the parents and stuff were actually very good with like, and some would call and ask, you know, trying to, you know, have difficulty logging on. But overall, actually, I think it went very well. I mean, actually, you know, some of it was more teachers who just you know may not have been like cte like i mean they're used to being in their shops right like everything's there and now it's like oh i gotta do it in front of this thing right like how do i do that or how do i show this and some have like cans you know they have their you know they're over an engine or they're you know it's like one was welding in his own shop like you know so i mean you i say you know necessity is the mother of invention right you just figure it out um, so I do think that's a good thing. So a lot of good things did come out of it, even though we had to live through that, right? None of us wanted to do that. But again, there's a lot of positive. Um, one thing I did this year was doing a de-stress Monday email. It's a campaign to, I think it's John Hopkins University, and trying to just get people like to, um, you know, de-stress a little bit and just, you know, try to clear your mind of everything else that was going on in our world and focusing a little bit on self-care. So we did some of that. Um, through the Generous X Fund and then um, Adirondack Foundation, I did submit a grant and we actually did get a grant for the Spelling Bee program. So we actually got $3,000. So we're going to use that to help 
get seed money for next year and use a little bit of it for the bee that it was this year. You'll see the spelling bee photo on the right. Um, Plattsburgh City won again. Um, so we are going to be returning back to Plattsburgh. Um, so we're excited. Um, thanks to Plattsburgh. We did delay our spelling bee from March to May just because we thought it'd be a little bit better. We could open doors and be more ventilation. Maybe we'd be in a better spot and we actually were. And I would say it was just a great opportunity to see the kids and the parents all excited about their children being able to participate in a bee. I will tell you that everybody there was so, um, I how what was the word I would use? They were just like between the tech coordinating five rooms for grade levels, plus the pronouncer, plus the three scoring judges, um, spelling judges, plus the MC, you know, or our host with Jeff, plus all the, the going to the auditorium so the parents who are there can see all the rooms. Like it was just incredible. Um, Amy was there helping us this too, and she's done that for many years. Um, but it was just like people were just like, I don't know how your IT folks and your communication folks did this. Like they were just like, nobody else could have pulled this off. Like it was, I don't know, and it just worked very well. And the students were the best. They were the least like, they're like, yeah. <laughs> right up in front of their laptops, do their thing, you know, take their mask down, put their mask up, go back. I'm like, you didn't even have to tell them what to do. It was just, it was incredible. And they were just so happy to be there. And I will say the two Peru's, Girl, the girls, they won fourth grade and fifth grade, I think it was. And they were like best friends by the end of the night. Like they were, I mean, they knew each other, but they were in different grades. But it was just so cute seeing just the, you know, collegiality and they still had masks on, but they didn't care. They were still kids, like they were just having fun. So that was a great moment and a highlight, I think, for our year. Uh, definitely, you know, with reopening plans and I'm sorry that people have to do more reopening plans this summer, and that's something that aren't we already open? Uh, but anyway, we're going to probably get new reopening guidance, right? And so everybody's going to go back to the drawing board. But I will say we did a lot of conversation with superintendents, administrators, and then internally, just making sure everybody was ready. And the main thing is, do people feel comfortable coming back from the buildings, right? Um, so we made sure that that would happen and it took everybody to do that. So um, we did spend a lot of time that summer and then throughout the year and then just constantly updating our plan. Um, long range planning of services, as you know, with my retirement, but also we have other staff retiring. Um, so you will see through our grant um, procurement coaster, there's going to be some positions coming up for you to consider uh, because we do have potentially our person and our supervisor in that position within the year will probably be retiring. Probably we're just trying to plan. Um, but really, there's, you know, it's so critical to have people working alongside and learning the ropes as you go. And that field is very, very specific and specialized. So you want to make sure you have good people there. And again, all we're doing is making sure there's no interruption of services to our districts. And in that one, you don't want any loss of money, right? Because that's critical for all those districts to rely on all the monies that are coming in and making sure they are maximizing and stretching the dollars, right? Um, so we're trying to make sure, and I have a lot of veteran staff, so we are going to see at ISC um, a high turnover between clerical. I mean, there's a lot of people that are two, three, four years out from retiring, but it's been great having veteran people, but then all of a sudden they're gone, right? So then you're like, how do we transition that? So. Um, Alex will be here a while. Just so you know. <laughs> um, and then just ongoing support of the capital project. I will see Eric has done outstanding work and all the divisions have done work. But also I would credit Alex too and some other people like Jeff in our building. Just really, you know, getting into the, with the South building this year. That's where we spent a lot of our time just because that's where we're moving. Uh, but making sure like all those details are taken care of. After a while, I just get to a point where I don't even care what the color of the cabinets are, right? Like, I mean, they're then they're all down to every little outlet and every little thing and every, I'm like, I don't know how you're doing it because it's like they have these massive charts and Excel spreadsheets and I'm just like, I like it. I, I'll say this is the furniture layout for the offices. That's what I'll do. Um, but I will say it's just great work. I think you're going to have an awesome conference center, I think. I mean, based on the, what I've seen in the company that we're working with, um, it's going to be like phenomenal and state of the art. And I really say kudos, and I think it's time for it to happen. 
Um, it's been a long time coming compared to what we have here. So hopefully you'll have that outstanding experience. And as I said, I just wish you well, and I know you're going to do great things. Come visit anytime. Yes, I will. <laughs> Okay, good evening, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> I think uh, everyone before me talked about the pandemic and successes uh, you know, that we've experienced this year through much adversity. It really it comes down to the dedication of hard work staff, um, staff of our organization, the special education division, we're over 200. Employees strong and all of our employees are essential. I know Dr. Davey mentioned it at the beginning. We were able to provide in person instruction every day because of our employees and their commitment to our students and our program. So, we're really grateful for their uh, sacrifices that they made this year on behalf of the organization. Taking a step past that uh, was really great practice for us in the division to reflect and to think about all the hard work and accomplishments that this year has brought. Um, beyond the pandemic. The first one is our instructional technology infrastructure. We began a long term planning, incorporating a five year replacement plan cycle uh, that began for, you know, we began coordinating last spring with Alex in IT. Uh, last summer, we saw the purchase and install of 19 Promethean panels to replace aging smart boards. Um, that was accompanied by PD to support our instructional staff for use. Um, Early fall, so they could use that instructional tool with students. We're able to provide all of our teaching assistants with laptops this school year, which was a first for us. Um, all of our teachers, teaching assistants, and related service providers all had laptops um, and virtual devices if it was needed for that video piece uh, to communicate. So, through those efforts with this long term planning, uh, it's our intent to replace you know, this equipment. A continual basis so that we don't have uh, any high peaks when it comes to cost. We can manage that for our students and programming, bringing them the high quality uh, tools that are needed to educate students in this day and age. The next piece, we really worked hard uh, strengthening our partnerships with component districts. In the face of adversity, it really brings everyone closer together. Uh, so whether it's weekly meetings, bi weekly meetings, uh, really it was a year of problem solving. And we had to rely on our neighbors to do that. So that really brought everyone closer. Um, more communication, whether it's principals contacting component district chairpersons about services or programs, or teachers communicating uh, back with families. It really was a, a year strengthening partnerships. The next piece I want to highlight uh, curriculum work. Uh, so typically, during a pandemic, you wouldn't necessarily you know, dedicate time to curriculum work, but we have been able to do that really over the past two or three months. Um, kudos to our curriculum coordinator, Angie Waldron, and Principal Nikki O'Connell. They really, really led the charge for this. And a lot of good things are going to come out of it that we're going to implement next year. And we're going to have consistent programming pieces, whether students are in our academic or life school programming in Mineville or here in Plattsburgh. Um, so being able to provide the best uh, teaching tools, you know, for our staff, for our students is really, really important for us as a service provider that, um, you know, specializes. And that's what we do in the special education department. We specialize in providing services and programs for students with moderate to severe disabilities. Speaking of specialization, our work experience lab, uh, as a result of the capital project that Eric highlighted was completed. I probably shouldn't use the word complete area, but have our Plattsburgh campus. Uh, the work that was done last summer allowed us uh, to begin school and then you know plan for an in-person ESY program this school year that will not be interrupted. Um, but one of the great accomplishments was combining two smaller classrooms into one large space, and that is our work experience lab. Our uh, work experience is a space that all of our students can access, so it doesn't matter which program they're in, and that is Really, we are uh, we begin working with students ages 14 and up, giving them work readiness skills and preparing them for success outside of school and really through our program uh, where we can support their independence and move to the work site uh, through one of our community partnerships in the area. 
weren't able to that this year uh, because of the pandemic, but we're gearing up to make that shift for next school year. Finally, on this last page, I think you guys have heard about some of these things already. Uh, creation of a comprehensive counseling plan. Uh, this has been a year long process study led by Dr. Stay and myself, working with our counseling team, uh, really creating a framework for a multi tier support uh, system for students with disabilities, really focusing on mental health and being able to provide more service to students that need more. And then keeping that constant lens of trauma informed practice at the forefront. Partnership with Dave Melnick is invaluable. We'll continue that in the next school year and really honing our skills at the classroom level so we can support our students that need it most. Great programming starts with high quality hiring. Really happy and proud of our hiring process last year. We hired three new teachers that have done outstanding work for us this year. This master level social worker uh, came to us from the college. She's outstanding. And then two great administrators, uh, Principal O'Connell has been a great addition. And then our adult services admin service Administrator uh, Iorio uh, in the middle of the year, bringing their expertise is definitely spring for the programs that we provide in the region. And finally, that last piece you can see uh, from the pictures and icons, just uh, professional grade communication pieces that were developed this year, starting with our teachers and service providers, uh, facilitating great principals and coordinators, and then in collaboration with the communications department here at ISC. It's very, very important to us um, that those items represent what we currently do and how we service students and they are readily available to our school community. Um, so thank you very much for that work. Uh, Terry and everyone over here, it's really appreciated. That's it for the special education division. I know Director Friedman talked about the greater plan and in the appendices, uh, you can see the finer points of our strategic plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Slattery. And, and I want to commend our leaders uh, who presented this evening as well. You can see not only their knowledge and expertise, but also the, the pride in their work and, and their divisions, as well as the entire organization and the coordinated effort. Um, it's, it's done on a, on a regular basis. This is something that we do every day. And we move forward as a team and we've been working to really move us forward even during a pandemic which was truly amazing so i want to thank our colleagues and our administrative team as a whole and especially our cabinet for their leadership and helping set the pace for the entire organization uh, you you've heard the old analogy that the speed of a train is governed by the speed of the engine um, and this is th these leaders are the engine of our organization for moving this slow and then with a tremendous staff who's helping us make that happen. So we're so pleased to continue to serve our students, to work for our, with our component districts, and to serve the North Country and really be leaders of um, even during a pandemic or in spite of a pandemic. Um, so I want to just kudos to our entire team and thank you for all of your leadership. Um, with that said, you do see uh, a overview of our 21-22 strategic planning calendar. Uh, we have our fall strategic planning day scheduled. Uh, Mr. Brady will, Sean Brady will be joining us for one last time. We are looking at some options in terms of transitioning past the, year, the next year beyond this. Uh, we do have our schedule and our, our location and so on and so forth planned out, similar to this year and similar to the past where we have check-in meetings, where we continue to keep our finger on the pulse, but also continue to work and monitor what's being done. Um, it's that old adage, what gets checked gets done. Um, and so we're continuing to move forward with that, with, with really the focus to continue to support the work in the divisional teams and the day to day. Um, and with that said, we just want to thank also the board. Uh, it's been with your support and your guidance that we've been able to focus on our continuous improvement planning process and made it a reality, not just something that is something we talk about. And lastly, not only our district planning team, but our divisional teams were then supported by all of our staff who helped really de define and implement our strategic plan and our work on a daily basis. You know, it, as we said, it was an extraordinary year and we continue to provide, you know, high levels of quality educational program 
uh, it was safe. We did it as safe as possible with best practices implemented and all the pandemic, you know, COVID safety measures, as well as providing a welcoming environment for students who needed our support more than that. This was a year that our students needed the connection with their teachers, whether electronically or in person at some of the highest levels ever. We know mental health support is going to be needed at higher levels as we go forward, but, but our staff was able to step up and step forward and support our students. And with your support, that was made possible. So we're so appreciative of that. And with that said, uh, we'll see the yes strong. Uh, as you look at the rest of the uh, a couple of you know pictures during from during the school year, uh, whether it's of the, our uh, Christmas tree ornament that represented New York State and Washington at the White House, um, just truly amazing and well a recognition for for CVS as well as our special education division, truly fantastic. Uh, you've got an NTHS ceremony. You've got a, a couple of a picture of our recent prom. You know, talk about you know smiles and, and having a blast with our staff engaging. You know, at some of the just truly enjoying the moment as well as enjoying our students um, and the celebrations as well. <laughs> Bless you, Assemblyman Jones, uh, with his Go Pink supporting cancer prevention. Uh, and you see the next picture as well, the spelling bee. Truly an amazing event. The Scholars great. Your team did a tremendous job. Um, really amazing. Um, and talk about the celebrations and those are genuine smiles and joy, um, especially recognition of academic achievement. And you, you talk even with DEI, you know, and part of the DEI initiative is you celebrate achievement and you celebrate equity. The two go hand in hand and you can't have one without the other. Um, and I think that's a good example of that as well. Um, whether it's the one-on-one -on -one instruction, you have our cleaning practices and protocols that happen as well as our family nights. You know, the, starting with the day of school, you think back to how we open school, all the challenges we face throughout the year, and we continue to move forward and yet put it in place. Uh, and it was done successfully, and we continue to move forward again as a team and as LOCs and support our districts at some of the highest levels ever. So we thank you for your support, and we thank you for your, your continued, you know, ongoing, you know, focus to help us pay attention to this and help us move forward as a, as a LOCs. And lastly, as you look at your PowerPoint, the divisional slides are actually divided up where the detailed plans for central administration, CB Tech, and structural services and special education are also outlined in the PowerPoint, should you desire. Uh, I'd like to just open the floor up at this point. So are there any questions or, or anything as we, as we wrap it up? So this, this whole process, is it? Unique to us, or are there other BOCES that do the similar kind of thing? There are some BOCES who have chosen to do the same thing on a regular basis. Not all. Um, I would say there's a handful of us that have worked with Sean Brady. Uh, DCMO BOCES has worked with them um, and are following a similar pattern. And, and actually, they borrowed some of our ideas and, and templates. Um, so Perry Dewey is the DS there, does a great job. Um, and they've continued to implement successfully. There's also say Lawrence or Jefferson Lewis has, has an ongoing strategic plan process. So many of them, we all have annual goals. Right. Um, our process is, is very, uh, has, we followed a similar format and a template, but there are some other, other BOCES as well. I know I've shared some of the same information with FDH BOCES, even locally. Um, so as a group, you know, we do share best practices and I'm so proud to be able to share those ideas with, with other policies as well. Okay. Any other questions? I'd like to say, tell Terry, Terry, it's your last year. I love this format. There's not a lot of TBDs and where there are, there's an explanation. Perfect. Just in time, right? Just <laughs> 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 oh, it took eight years. <laughs> um, I, I just like to say what a wonderful job everyone's done in such a trying year. And um, I, I got to say, wonderful leaders ha have led to wonderful programs, and we've got some of the best. And each and every one of you deserves our, our thanks and our, our gratitude. And members of the board uh remember we did hire some great people so we can take kudos for that but um 
those in the trenches, wonderful job. And thank you so, so much for our children. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? All set? Okay. On to the next challenge. <laughs> One more picture while we're yeah. making the transition. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> You've seen enough pictures, right? Yeah. <laughs> no more pictures. No. That's Not till tomorrow. Not till tomorrow. <laughs> Back to my age of Kodak. <laughs> so I guess we're the capital project update. Yes. Much more so. I, I'm going to just ask Mr. Bell to, to step up and just give us an overview. Again, we've continued to move forward successfully. Our, our capital project progress at the satellite, at the satellite campus has been amazing. Um, and, and really, they're going to town. Um, as the old adage, you know, some of the, the contractors have been actually ramped up so that they could, could really finish the work. And, and move forward on schedule. So, Mr. Bell. Yeah, happy to. I'll start with action items on the board agenda tonight. We are asking the board to consider a change order for the North Building roof uh, at our satellite campus. <coughs> we did find some leaks in that roof, uh, similar to our south building that the board did approve uh, two two meetings ago. Uh, so we're hopeful the board will consider that change order. Uh, looking at that work done in July with our current roofing contractor, A.W. Farrell. Mineville, we're ramping up efforts to start construction in Mineville. That is planned to begin next week. Uh, we are starting on the exterior of that building. We have footers going in for the new vestibule, a brand new exterior addition to that building to bring our uh, current entrance. We're actually extending it out and creating a second level uh, of doors there, storefront doors. So we have a secure vestibule coming into the building. Anytime you get into the ground, you never know what you're going to find. So our goal all along has been to get in there as early as we possibly can. So uh, working with our directors and Dr. Stay, and our construction team, we're targeting uh, work on that next week at our Mineville campus. Uh, we do have the specific materials in the building, so that building is fully posted for abatement work that's going to be done, and that abatement work will be ongoing during the summer. Uh, around the windows, the caulking uh, does have ACM, I'll say, a specific asbestos containing material, so ACM in the caulking around the windows. We have it on our primer of our block walls, so deep below three or four or five levels of paint. Uh, so we are drilling into those walls or disrupting those walls at all. That's all being done by abatement contractor. AAC is the abatement contractor underneath Renane, our, our general contractor. We also do have vermiculite in our exterior block walls. We know that it is existing, so that's we know it's there. So our abatement contractor will be busy, or I should say the subcontractor will be busy on that project. Uh, and we will start our abatement work in the CB Tech Wing once school is at. So uh, June 21st, the Monday after schools are done, all their programming, or CB Tech is all done with their programming in that building. We'll start working with CB Tech side of the building. And then after summer school is done, the three or four classrooms there and their leftover will do the work in that. And we're replacing every window, all the exterior doors in the classroom, new safe, secure vestibule, and a, a removing the main office to be right off from that secure vestibule. A lot of work we've done this summer. We're trying to get a jump start on it. That's why we're starting next week. So building, like Dr. Davy said, we're on schedule, tracking well. Uh, we are having over 20 contractors working every single day in that building. We've made great progress. We had to move our management services staff out as I'm standing in our HR slash payroll <laughs> office currently, uh, our temporary spot. Uh, we also need to move uh, 10 other individual staff members uh, to the main campus. So we needed a landing spot for them. Uh, we, we didn't want to expend the funds, or we were trying not to expend funds on leasing some facilities. So we worked with our directors on trying to find space. Director Freeman graciously did a lot some space to us for June 15th. We moved in May 27. <laughs> and the contract is very happy. Uh, and, and part of our motivation was we want, we want to move June 1st. So on the back end, we can move in or move out, I should say, of CB Tech before school starts. Um, so that way, come September, uh, the director treatment and team can be coordinated and ready with staff that made the services out of the way. So we're going to get that jump start as of June 1. And then there was a snow day that we called uh, prior to Memorial Day. And if we were to move sooner, we were going to gain three days of construction in our manager services offices. So we worked with uh, Michelle and team and we're able to move 
and, and our staff was so welcoming uh, and, and jumped on it and, and were phenomenal from our own MT moving the staff to our administrative team coordinating and our instructional staff being accommodating as well as our friends at ISC welcoming the other half of our staff. Uh, so demo is complete in a major services area already. Uh, we've already got the underlayment floor down. Uh, the flooring contractor is ready to go and move into that space. Alongside our, our capital project work, our O&M team is actually rewiring the building. Uh, so the, the electrical we have is just upgrading. So we have um, residential wiring in there, it needs commercial. So our actual internal team is working on that. We have our uh, electrical teacher uh, working for us this summer, Ms. Fred Johnson. He will join our team and uh, do that work alongside us as well. We're, our O&M team is doing ceilings, uh, floors, in some of the offices, we're actually building four new offices as well with our O&M staff. So a lot of work going on in the space. In the actual hangar area, uh, they've started to put in the ceiling tiles in the office space. So our office space is getting very close to being complete. Uh, the, when we look in the large group construction area, our conference area, it was held up due to the steel, cross bracing the steel that sat before four was done and work like Dr. Dave said, they were going to town in that space. Uh, we got our steel for the retractable walls. We were held up in our special ed conference room for months because that steel never came in. At that same time, we ordered the steel for the conference center and it was on site. So that's all been installed. We all this up and we've actually drywalled that whole space. So great progress in, on the LDI area. Our bathrooms in that location are all tied. So they're completely done the tiling and ready for fixtures in our two gang bathrooms, two individual bathrooms that we have in that in the hangar space. Uh, fire alarm project, uh, mini capital projects as we call them, uh, fire alarm projects, we are working with schoolhouse construction now, thanks to the board at last meeting, allowing them to uh, contract with us for that work. Uh, they have been actively pursuing our contractor to come back and finish the work. They have a game plan uh, in order to complete it, and we are targeting once school is out that they come in and complete the punch list items it's about five pages long of work at both the campus, uh, but we're very thankful that Schoolhouse on site working for us to motivate the contractor to come back and do the work because it's a small piece that is left. Uh, infrastructure and door project tonight, uh, action item for the board to consider is increasing that budget. So taking our annual alignment for our mini capital projects, increasing that budget. And the goal, and I, Dr. Davey did share in the transmittal some pictures, the doors are targeting. The infrastructure project, the door project took care of the CB Tech classroom exterior doors. Uh, we put in new FRP doors instead of the hollow metal that were running out. These doors that we're, we're looking at are the doors in the WAF portion of our building or the special education division in classrooms there. This would completely change out all of our classroom doors in the building except for the glass storefront doors, which aren't in our classrooms, but they're our main entrances. So uh, this is just to increase the budget in preparation for a quote. And then at a subsequent meeting, we'd be looking at a change order for June 30th, right around the corner. If we don't increase the budget now, we then lose that money and have the inability to approve any changes. Lastly, uh, to Terry's point, uh, really it takes all of our organization to get where we are today. You know, we constantly talk about uh, under budget, uh, on schedule, uh, that has not been an easy process, and, and the reason we're here it starts with Dr. Davis' leadership, but really our um, whole team, from our administrators, our, our staff being just flexible, patient with us, and everybody bought into this. You know, it, it comes from a long process. You know, that happened well before I got here to have a plan in place, the strategic plan process, talking about the capital project, and then everybody working together. Um, in, in Dr. Davis' motto is to empower people who have skills and talent. But to do the work so that we have a strong end product, um, we have done that on this capital project. And we talked about Jeff and Alex, and you know, we work with both directors and we work with Jerry Brooks. You won't you won't notice the work that was done. Um, where it sticks out is that we're saving money, we're saving a boatload of money. Um, we're maintaining our schedule, and the end product is better because of it. Uh, so those little moments when we're in, we're in a dark room with a contractor having conversations. Um, whoever that is, we find out so much stuff and we can redirect before we get too down, far down the wrong path. And it's been powerful because CBS is such a strong organization with a lot of talent. And we've used all of our talent here at CBS to get us where we are today. And we got a long way to go in the next three months and we're going to be using that talent. So 
fortunately part of the process, but we have a, we have a great team and a great organization to get there. Will you return to Logan I'm not going to go there. Like we don't have any lights in the South Bend, so they're all dark now. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Well, and, and lastly, Mr. Bell, just the amount of work that's going to going to really gear up, not only in terms of the building, uh, real construction will be back in the next few weeks to really ramp up on our site work to put in the new second entrance, um, as well as a, the new entrance coming across from River Street. Um, so that's exciting as well. Um, so not only is the site work going to be ramped up and, and, and finished, but also the building as well. And, and kudos to Mr. Bell and our construction team. Um, I know I've had the opportunity over the, over the our project to stop by and, and walk through the, the, the project as well. And I'll share with you, even the, the foremen of the construction teams are happy to have the discussions. And there has not been one time where I haven't walked that out this past week. I had the opportunity to walk the walk our satellite campus with the foreman for Wyman Electric and talk to he was so proud to share the work that they've done, gave some advice. There were a couple of things that I came back and asked Eric about that, that allowed us to make even some, some focused decisions. Um, just an opportunity. I know Mernayan has done the same thing as well as our GC. Um, so they've been really proud of their work and the what's being accomplished um, because there is that tension. But there's also the teamwork and our, our schoolhouse construction's been on it. Um, and their their leadership has been important and Century Tech has been right at the table with us every step of the way. So this it's been done with a lot of collaboration, but also a lot of attention and asking hard questions. Uh, and with that said, it's the partnership of our of our own M team as well as Mr. Bell and Mr. Brooks leadership, our own internal direct facilities and grounds director, who's also also shown leadership. So it's it's been a collaborative process and there's been a synergy. And then you throw in our administrative team giving input and really willing to chip in and our staff whenever possible. It's allowed us to really move forward successfully. So thank you. That was a great report and the progress. I'm good to hear everything's on time or ahead of time. We're saving money. Are we ready to move on? Yes. We can make a motion. Second. Great. Was that motion to second everything or first? No, I would just say it was a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Motion to approve the previous meeting. We have two motions. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. That's that. Agenda. Motion to second. Motion by Richard. Second by Lisa. In favor? Opposed? Carried. All business and this committee, no action. This agenda for now. Motion by second. Second. Lisa, second. In favor? Aye. 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 Carried. Okay. Um, let's see. Motion 24, career and technical education research. That's all we need a motion for. Motion. Second. Okay, motion to move second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carry. What is no action? Next one is 27. Employee benefit, accrued liability, reserve fund resolution. Motion. Second. 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 Let me. Retirement contribution reserve fund. All those favor? Opposed? Retirement contribution reserve fund resolution. Motion. Richard, second. Okay. All those favor? Aye. Your business, I think. Uh, yes, sir. So we have a uh, change order for the roofing. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carried. Then we have a recommendation to include uh, five contractors on the list. Consultant agreements. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Here. 
Do we have a recommendation to approve the viewer's actions? Motion. Second. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Mr. Coakley. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I'm excited for this opportunity and uh, look forward to uh, to joining such a great team. I've, um, just watching this board meeting tonight um, reassures the fact that I made the absolute right decision and look forward to working hard and joining joining this team. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Sampier. Alrighty. Um, so, yes, we're ready for your update. Okay. Uh, just as a final step in the process, we have our CBS uh, district superintendent's update. Um, with that said, we start off with there's a few items here. Um, just end of year celebrations and graduations. Congratulations to all of our graduates. You're aware, Mr. Friedman. Thank you for the update about uh, CB Tech graduations. We have our two special education graduates graduation coming up tomorrow in Mineville, and and on Friday at the the Guilds Auditorium. Yes. yes. So we're really excited about that and and being part of that and really the celebration of our students' success and their with their families. So congratulations to all of our graduates. Um, as the board is aware, and in the past, board is interested. If you are interested in attending those graduations. Please just let Mr. Rabbit do now so we can make appropriate recommendations and notifications with our divisions. Um, in some cases, there's the 
seating is a little bit more limited, so we want to make sure that we have availability. Um, but we are welcome you as, as always to participate in those as well. And we also, while you're there, would like to recognize you as well. Uh, that's important, and we, we also appreciate your participation because you also represent each of your development districts as well as the, the BOCES as a whole. Um, the third item on uh, the end of year celebrations and graduations is really a CBS update, and I'm so pleased to share. Uh, and, and I'm going to just touch with Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Friedman as well about the DASNY grant. You, you may recall that we had had uh, been contacted to work with Assemblyman Jones. Uh, before the pandemic started regarding a grant for some CTE equipment as well, it's approximately $125,000. Uh, we were just notified and received an email yesterday uh, about really following up on that and taking action and who is the, the, the contact. So both Mrs. Friedman and I will be the contact for that. Mrs. Friedman, I know that we had spent a little while since that. Anything you want to share about that? Yeah, I had to pull the file because it literally was put away. Uh, we, we worked on it all last year and filed the actual grant paperwork with DASNY in April of 2020. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we were busy doing other things. <laughs> uh, so when Dr. Davy called today, I really, I idea what he was talking about. I'm like, oh, the Billy Jones one? Yeah, that's that awesome. Wasn't that like 30 years ago? <laughs> um, so we're really excited. Um, we, we are probably going to have to get some clarification from them on some of the items that we originally listed a, a year ago, or actually more than a year ago, on purchases that we would like to make to upgrade um, because we may or may not have already taken care of those things um, with the sale of our BAI um, um, properties. So we are really excited about the, the continuation of really updating equipment and as you guys know in some cases haven't been updated 20 to 25 years so we are making significant gains in leveling that that the playing field so uh, we're super excited and we'll keep you posted on um, what's next but I, I didn't even know where the folder was and the team of our vacation and I'm like oh I got to refresh my memory that's more easy to do but it's super great things. Okay, exciting. So we'll keep you informed as we move forward. Just a couple of other areas, COVID updates. You know that that continues to be an evolution. Um, there's been recent guidance about about masks, um, about districts do have the option outside, and there was always the option for districts to make decisions about mask wearing in schools as well as outside. Um, the standard had been even outside during athletic events to wear masks. Uh, the state just came forward, DOH following the CDC guidance that masks were optional and a district could choose not to have out masks outside as long as you continue to have social distancing. You know, and in classrooms, there's a three foot rule and, and, and once you go outside of classrooms, you're up to six foot and so on and so forth. So a lot of our districts, including us, um, did make a decision with that. We sent out a, a, a notification to our staff as well as Terry got the communication out as well. Many of our component districts have also made those decisions. Um, so we're continuing to monitor and keep our finger on that pulse. Um, we do expect that though there will be continued evolution with that. Um, unfortunately, uh, we would encourage the state to try to practice uh, a little bit more notification if possible, because the notice about the mask came out on Friday afternoon and we were supposed to implement by Monday. Um, so Saturday and Sunday don't give a lot of time for input except a lot of social media. Um, so it doesn't, in other words, it might be one different, perhaps a recommendation to come out with a recommendation on Monday or Tuesday and say implement by Friday. So we could have some time to help, you know, gather information and questions and then move forward. But we, we'll take it as it comes and we'll continue to support our state. Um, but we are moving forward as a team to make that help work. Our check in meetings with the Essex County Health Department, Clinton County are continuing. We've been having follow up discussions about the ELC reopening school grant. Clinton County, as you're aware, is receiving $2.4 million to help schools reopen and monitor for testing and COVID evaluation and health support moving forward in the next 16 months. Essex County is over a million dollars, I believe 1.2 to 1.4 million. Um, and with that being said, CBS is being asked to be a lead with our school districts. Um, to help implement that and of those monies, 85% of that money needs to go to schools. 
So the county is the money that is a pass through and flow through from the county health departments. Um, but both county governments also need to approve that to make that happen. So we will be providing you updates and it's something where we, we had discussions today with our chief school officers in Essex County. Um, not only do we have our eight, eight component districts, but there's another four, so there's 12 total uh, school districts, both two of which are in Wishy Bosies and two of which are in FDH. We also have our eight, eight school districts in Clinton County plus CBS. So we're playing, continuing to play a leadership role and support that, whether it's through our community schools coach or through other areas as well. We're also working on a medical services director and an RFP. So we're continuing to really collaborate with our school districts on all, on all this and helping provide us a higher standard with even perhaps telehealth um, sites in schools as well as potentially testing machines. And the schools that actually have their LSL, their limited service licensing tests, like CBS does, you can actually buy a testing machine um, that you can change the cartridges out and you could do your own uh, flu evaluation or strep throat evaluation in, in your nurse's office. Um, so there, there's some really pretty innovative ideas that we might be able to work with our providers and we're talking about how we can partner with our health departments, with our local providers and provide higher levels of, of medical support for all of our students. It's actually very exciting with an opportunity. Um, so we will keep you updated with that. Terry and Eric, anything else I missed that kind of gave a quick summary on that? Okay, um, and lastly, we will do expect that there's going to be updated 21-22 guidance, and this summer we will be reconvening our reopening to help get us ready for this for the fall. Um, lastly, we want to congratulate uh, the, the board and all of your component districts on the successful budget votes. Um, all of our school districts passed, um, and so we're pleased that that's moving forward as well. Um, we do have our next board meeting, which is the BOCES uh, reorganizational meeting, which is July 14th. It will be scheduled here in Plattsburgh. Um, we did have a request and, and great, great request as well with Scotty Horn. Um, we did share that information that we would look into it about the one call now preference. The board is on, on our CVS all email distribution. So when an email goes out to the staff, you receive the same email. Um, we do have a one call now system that's set up. So, for example, if there's going to be a closing um, in Mineville, but not Plattsburgh, the parents in, Pla in Mineville would actually get the call. If our, we do have a closing in Plattsburgh, those parents, but not Mineville, would get that call. Or if we have a medical emergency or something, that one call now can go out. It's the same and to its, to its our parent, for our parents. Terry has been our, our go-to person for our one call now messages in Plattsburgh. Dr. Stay has traditionally done the one call now messages in mind though. Um, we do have the option if, and we, Eric or Alex, thank you for your support as well, <coughs> because we, could, we can have, have board members sign up if you'd like to receive those calls. Traditionally, it's the same message that's being sent out via email. But if you would like to be on the one call now message, I'd ask you to, to let Mrs. Rabideau know. You can sign up for just Plattsburgh's calls, just Mindville's calls, or both. So it would be your choice, but just remember, if we, if school is closed, um, you're going to get a call at 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, what was it earlier? 6.30. 6.30, Terry? 6 o'clock, they have to be by 6.15, we have to notify people when they're traveling. So by 6 o'clock, you get a call. <laughs> so so you, want to wake up. you are welcome. We are all well, welcome. So you get the messages. You'll be back on the, the call. It is one way to make sure you're, you're continue to be informed. I know I get to call on my cell phone as well as my home number as well. Um, so with that said, and generally I, I know about the call ahead of time. If there are, you know, disciplinary issues or emergencies that come out, we do notify the board and we let, let you know, you know, uh, via email. Um, and, and other emergencies, I bet we actually have made calls before. Um, so those are things that I'm happy to do for the board and we're happy to do as a team as needed. But we are also happy to have you sign up if you'd like to. Um, so I would ask you if, if three board members choose Mineville and four choose Plattsburgh and, and five get both, that's perfect. Whoever would like to have that one call now sign up. Please let Mrs. Rabbit know and we'll plan on implementing that for the start of the new school year. Mr. St. Pierre, thank you in advance for your help too. You'll have a Plattsburgh group, a, a Mineville group, and we'll have an all group. So you'll be able to get the calls if you, you were 
you know, back in the parent mode and get the calls like that, like that, you know, other parents will get it for our, for our bosses. I think you should tell them the story about the three calls. Uh, so I, I didn't tell Mr. St. Pierre, I did have one experience as a component superintendent where my assistant superintendent for business was the person who made the, the one call now calls. Uh, we were on the phone at 3 a.m. to be, and had discussions with our transportation supervisors and the town highway departments and all the area schools. We all closed down at 3 a.m. At 3.30 a.m., my assistant superintendent actually sent out the message. And, but he didn't set a delayed call. So we got very quite a few angry calls. Uh, and I feel that one call and the parent was very upset. And he said, don't ever call me like that again. And he said, at 315, my home phone rang. At 3 325, my cell phone rang. And at 330, my wife's cell phone rang. Uh, so so that he got three. Three calls by 3.30 a.m. And we made sure that that didn't happen again. I will share with you that. Um, so we will try to avoid that and have a more reasonable hour. Um, but that was a, it was a, back it was humorous, but it wasn't humorous for those parents at that time. So be careful when you sign up for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that is an option and, and we're happy to, to provide that support. Um, we also have a board seat that will be available and open for starting July. Uh, we do have a former board member who is interested, Swarren Sears uh, from Crown Point, who's willing to serve in that role as well. Uh, we have had conversations with our component district superintendents. There does not appear to be interest at this time from the districts who are unrepresented. Um, so we have let them know that that is a possibility as well. Um, and so with the board's approval, we'd be willing to reach out. I know Mr. Sears is a member of the, the Crown Point um, Board of Education. would be willing to continue to return and, and become an active board member for the year here field last week. But I'd like to just try to ask Mr. St. Pierre if there's any, any other questions. She, she's willing to do it. She uh, kind of enjoys doing that stuff. She's, and the good news is she's retiring from her job, so she'll be more available to the that should do that. It's the kind of stuff she's she's been a project manager for years, long foundries. So she's used to work with folks. We enjoy helping. And if someone finally comes up from the other districts and decides they want to be part of it, she's saying that's fine too. She'll just stay on. So with the board's permission, Mr. St. Pierre's ability has the authority to make that recommendation and we can notify our school districts that that we'd like to move forward with that. And some of them can always say they'd like to, to throw put their name in the ring as well for consideration, uh, which Ms. Sears, Sears, as you mentioned, has said is would be fine. Yeah. But she's willing to fill the role and so we have a full board as well. Sounds um, good. And thank you for that. And lastly, just the DS and SED updates. Uh, Board of Regents meeting uh, this this past week. Um, again, you know, an, an active board meeting, lots of activity, support, and follow up, especially for re reopening and continued COVID responses, some updates in terms of certification and other things as well. We did send that information out as far as to the board. Um, there, you did have a copy of my DS highlights in terms of from my recent DS meeting for May. Which had quite a bit of information, but also gave you some insight into some of the decisions and what's happening as we move forward. Um, and lastly, the Board of Regents is continuing to support not only civic readiness as part of their effort to support education and also their diversity, equity, and inclusion, which includes that again, academic excellence and equity being being conjoined and together. Um, CBS is moving forward with our own DEI initiative with some administrative training and workshops this summer. We have our own internal team who's going to support that. It's called uh, diving into our biases and we're picking the dates now. We do anticipate having a th series of three workshops where, where our internal staff will be working in dialogue and growing our capacity as we get ready for the fall. Um, so that's it for our, our update, unless there's any questions from the board. There's no questions. Motion. Motion. motion by Bruce, second by Richard, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank everyone, all of our board members as well. And in person. Thank you, everyone. Good night.